All right, everyone, this is Norval Central coming back at you with another YouTube video. And I just want to thank everyone for all the love and the support of my videos. Be sure to like, comment your thoughts, and also subscribe to the channel. It is completely free. But before we get into the, to the uh, main part of the video, I just want to really thank everyone for the uh, continued commitment on my Instagram account, my Twitter account, all my social media accounts. I'm trying to put out as much content as I can, and I really do appreciate all the love and the support. But getting back to the video... Florida State has got an official visitor weekend this weekend that is absolutely massive. They have seven official visitors coming in for this weekend. Uh, first off, let's go ahead and start off with the tight ends. Uh, Jaheim Bell is a guy from South Carolina who they really, really like. He's really versatile, can play you know, tight end, outside receiver, slot receiver, can even play a little bit of running back. He's had a couple of running back touches at South Carolina the biggest thing with him was was coming in, he needed to get NIL opportunities and also playing opportunities. You can do both. Cam McDonald is no longer here, and I think that is something that Florida State is really, really heavily considering. Got the next guy, tight end Kyle Morlock. He's from Shorter, uh, Division II school, and he is a productive tight end that Florida State really, really likes. He came in for the Florida State versus Florida game, really liked what he saw, and now you're seeing his first visit coming to Florida State, and I believe he arrived last night. Um, so that's really impressive to see how Florida State's able to kind of twist that around and maybe get both of those tight ends. That would be really, really massive. And in terms of offensive line recruiting, you got Jeremiah By uh, Byers. He's a, a UTEP guy, and he's transferring over, hopefully going to be transferring to Florida State because, like I said, we need tackles. We need offensive linemen, guards, and uh, stuff like that as well. So he's an all-conference uh, mention, and he's also played in 12 games last season. He played in 12 games before that. He's had a lot of experience with the minors, and I think that's something that Florida State really, really covets. Uh, he could be a guard potentially as well, so that is something that's not really ruled out. You just want to see what's going to happen with Bless Harris with his injury coming back from uh, this upcoming season. Is he going to be a guard? Is he going to be a tackle? That's going to be something that people are going to look at. What happens to Darius Washington? We know about Robert Scott returning. You know what's going to happen in that offensive line room and how it shifts and shakes. But first part of business is getting buyers to commit. Uh, to the program and that could happen pretty quickly or it could take a little bit of time we'll, we'll definitely see about that one you got a guy like Ruben Bain the four-star defensive end he's out of Miami he's particularly a Miami lean at this point uh, his name is even Hurricane his brother is a graduate assistant at Miami could be a tough pull for Florida State but he is deciding on December 16th between Florida State and Miami as of course 247 reported as of earlier um, that could be something you can really think about because Florida State needs elite pass rushers. If they can get those elite pass rushers, man, that would be scary because Bain had 29 uh, sacks this past season, had 29 sacks before. So 58 sacks in two seasons, that is elite production, and you need to bring that talent on. Now, I've seen a lot of people talk about why is Florida State bringing them on to an official visit? Well, you always bring in elite talent at that point. You always try to bring in the most and best elite talent that you can in the recruiting rankings. But, of course, Bain is from the Miami area, so it is going to be a little bit tough. But once you put all those resources and time into a prospect, you need to finish it on out. You need to make sure that you actually have a lasting impression that could be able to make sure that he doesn't visit Miami anymore and that he wants to come to Florida State to play. And what better play to play at Florida State than a Jared Verse and Jermaine Johnson before him. So I think that could be a really factor in and, and could be somebody that you can look at for there. And even Patrick Payton can tell you it's a recruiting tool at the end of the day. Um, you got a guy like Cameron Robinson. He's a uh, Virginia commit four-star out of Virginia. Um, he is – Brendan Sonon, I believe, released a crystal ball prediction earlier to Florida State this morning. That is something to really, really factor in because this is a fast development. Uh, you know, you talk about Randy Shannon and Mike Norvell that conducted an in-home visit with him, and I think that's very important going forward there because you have to think at the Florida State linebacker room, it's not the greatest in terms of depth, but when you have a Blake Nicholson, DeMarco Ward, and then you're adding a Cameron Robinson, man, that could be really, really scary. I think that kind of eliminates their need in the transfer portal as well. If they're able to get three linebackers in this recruiting cycle, you kind of counter offset the Kalen Deloach, Tatum Bethune, and Brendan Gant leaving for next season. So you have to bring in more depth, and I'm sure they're going to probably bring in two or three more. But when you're running a 4-2-5 defensive scheme, you could have those younger guys kind of looking in the backfield and kind of figure out how to do the collegiate game and everything like that. I think that's very important to get that development going in that linebacker room so it can continue to stay uh, a competent room. Then you're looking at De uh, Devontae Brown. He's a USC uh, transfer. He's a cornerback 
Actually, his younger brother is the Mari Brown four-star out of Miami or at Fort Lauderdale, and I think it's going to be something really impressive to see. Are they a package deal? I talked about this a little bit before on my Instagram account, talking about would they be a package deal because I know both are very, very close to each other being brothers, and I understand that they want to play with one another. Granted, package deals don't really work out too much in recruiting because, like I said, they have to do what's best for them. But at the end of the day, it could be something that's really consistent. Now, he had an 81 PFF grade at UCF. The biggest thing that I've heard through my UCF content or contacts are is basically his effort. Is he going to be able to be a consistent cornerback and be a threat at that cornerback position? Because you already have your Renato Green at this point that's a consistent piece. You have an O'Marion Cooper that's been inconsistent this past season, but he does show a little bit of proof of concept. Kevin Knowles, you know, stuff like that as well. You got Jerry and Jones is coming back for his senior season. So the cornerback room is a little bit more crowded, but they want to add more pieces to that depth to continue and kind of rotate those cornerbacks and safeties out. And then the last one is Edwin Joseph. They're, he's actually listed as a three-star athlete. I believe they're going to be uh, getting him as a DB if he does intend to come. I believe uh, someone actually crystal balled him to Florida State recently. I believe it may be Brendan Sinone, but it may be someone else as well that I'm thinking of. But Edwin Joseph is a guy that's very, very close with Hakeem Williams, the five-star wide receiver commit. This is a guy that Florida State really, really likes. Uh, he is actually guiding – uh, gotten to take Florida State's last official visit before he is able to decide on early signing period on December 21st. And that's very impressive to see what Florida State, they've gotten everything kind of checks and balances there. They want to add another DB to this recruiting class, and I think they could very well do it. Um, they've already got three defensive backs committed to this class. I think they're going to add a fourth. They potentially might even add another safety in the, def- in the uh, transfer portal. I think that's very important because when you think about it, Florida State needs safeties. If J.B. Robinson does decide to go and goes to the NFL, you know, you have to fill that void. So I think there's going to be a lot of question marks throughout this uh, secondary. I think they're trying to shore that up, and I think Edwin Joseph is a guy that you can even do at wide receiver if you wanted to in certain spots, but I think he is more prototypical of a DB uh, DB at this next level. I think he's more of a safety more, more so than anything. But I really do think that this is going to be a great official weekend for Florida State going forward there. We'll see how everything plays out, but I think Mike Norvell is going to take advantage of a recruiting class that hasn't really quite finished yet. They've only got 16 prospects committed to the class, and I think you're going to see a lot more committed this past this weekend. If I had to pick on some of the prospects that I think could be some guys that you need to look out for for this weekend for potential commitments. I would say Jaheim Bell, the tight end uh, transfer from South Carolina, I think is a big, big get if Florida State is able to get him. And then you're looking at a guy like Edwin Joseph, who I think, as I just talked about, I think Florida State's done a really good job. Ron Dugan's done a good job on that. Randy Shannon, some of those guys from the Miami area is doing a really good job as well. Kyle Morlock, he's got a couple more visits to go. We'll see how that goes. Jeremiah Byers, he could be one of those where he pops off really quickly, wants to get the process over with. We'll see. Ruben Bain trending towards Miami, but we'll see how that goes. Cameron Robinson also got crystal ball to Florida State. I don't really think he's so reactionary that he commits on the spot this weekend. Could be wrong, but I think he kind of takes this over a next week or two and then maybe potentially picks Florida State. We'll see. And then Devontae Brown, I think this is a situation where Florida State really feels they're in a good position and could be a situation where Florida State locks him up this weekend as well. But if you had any questions or anything, comments, I tried to break down as much as I could in terms of just putting in a short, condensed video. But I really do appreciate all the love and the support of my YouTube channel. I'm getting close to 1,600 subscribers on YouTube. Please hit the subscribe button if you can. It would really mean a lot to me. And I hope you all have a great rest of the day. And as always, go Noles.